welcome to this new video tutorial. My name is Michael Ovello, and today I have a new microphone. I hope the quality of the sound is now better. And today I want to show you how you make uh, stainless steel. Um, stainless steel. Um, I don't want this glossy stainless steel. I want this brushed stainless steel here. And for this we have to think about what do we need. Okay, to get this brushed uh, look, we need a texture. And that we see what we are doing, we can just add a material and let's add a texture. And because I want this texture something like it's a little bit flaky, it's a little bit uh, mm, black and white and it goes in, in mainly in one direction but uh, the noise is everywhere and there's a word noise because of that we need a noise texture. Let's just add this to our diffuse shader here and let's have a look in the rendered section here what is going on and let's just in here and in the preview let's go down to 10 and yeah, that's okay. So now we can work on this. Okay, you see, it's uh, the noise is just a cloudy, noisy, colored texture, and I don't want this color. So I get rid of this color, and I use here uh, RGB to black and white node, and just put it in there between the noise and the diffuse color. And now we have a uh, black and white gray scaled uh, noise texture. But this texture is still um, yeah, too, it's too much, uh, it's too big here, and this, these flakes here are too big. So I scale this up a little bit, or a little bit uh, scaled up by, let's, let's use um, 35. Um, maybe a little bit more. Let's let's make it 40. And details are. Hmm. Now let's crank up the details as well to. Um, let's do 20. Okay, but now we see it's, it's uh, yeah it's flaky. It's um, it's not really a brush texture. Okay, for this I need an input node, uh, texture coordinates, because um, I have to tell Blender in which I, or where it has to put the texture, and for the direction I use a, um, a vector mapping here. Let's just put this in here, and make a little bit of space here. Let's grab this guy and grab this guy here and let's just, because we don't have a UV mapping, we can use the generated vector and we just connect these to our noise texture. Now, nothing happens because it's all set it as the default. And now we want to have it in one direction, we have to um, crank up this number here. Let's use this one here and scale it by 15. And let's see what's happened. Nothing because we don't have connect this guy here. And now, now we should see something. Okay, as you can see, it's now turning around uh, the sphere here. Uh, let's just bring this up to 25 and I think that's cool okay and now let's just add here another shader because it's not a diffuse material it's a glossy material let's add just a glossy shader and get rid of the diffuse. Just grab this guy here 
and edit here. And now we have a glossy material with a texture underneath. Okay, but um, it's still not looking like uh, really like a stainless steel. Stainless steel behaves uh, in the other direction than chrome. It's in the foreground, it's more black, and in the background, it's more white. Let's just add for this um, another shader here. Let's just add a mix shader. And let's move this here and grab this guy here and put it here. And then we add another glossy shader because I want to have a um, directional reflection here. Let's just add this here. And for the factor, um, I need a layer weight input node. Lay weight input node is here. Just put it here. Just connect the facing with the factor. Okay. Now we have some reflection here in the foreground. Here we have a uh, directive face, face direction and we have the black part. Um, here and that's perfectly okay. But uh, I think it's a little bit too much. Let go down with the numbers here to 0.2, maybe a little bit more. Maybe let's let's do 0.1. Okay, I think that's better right now. And now, um. Because I want uh, something have something like a, I want to have something like a color ramp here. Uh, I put in here um, a converter, a color ramp, and let's just add this here between the black and white node. And let's change the method to ease. And there we are. Now we have uh, stainless steel material. And I think it's really looking cool. Um, sure, we can improve that a little bit more. Mm, maybe if we make this here sharp and Let's see, let's make this that's it, between Pac-Man and G, 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 X is not much different. I can leave that as Pac-Man, that's okay. And let's just think about it. And I think it's it's perfectly okay for me. It works. Maybe we can scale up this guys here a little bit more. And maybe we can do this here as well by 30. Okay, I think that's that's cool. Let's move in a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Now we have this anisotropic look, but it's not anisotropic. Um, I think that's a really cool setup like this. Let's just render this out. Uh, I pause the recording and render this out and then have a look on it. Uh, the render is now nearly finished and you can see we have something like a rushed stainless steel. Sh sure it's not look really fancy here but if you put this on a plane or something like that and not a sphere, it looks really cool. 
like you can see here and here, it looks, looks fine. That's it for this part of the stainless steel uh, shader, but there's another way, the anisotropic way. And this I will show you in the next tutorial. Bye.